Hello friends, today we are going to tackle a project that I have been wanting to do for a while. We are going to make some freezer meals. Oh, and Miss Luna is going to come say hello. Hi sweetheart. So family dinners are very important to us and making meals is something that keeps me connected to my family during this grieving process. So dinner time is sometimes hard because I get tired by the time dinner comes around after, you know, a full day's activities. And so I was looking for a way to make dinner a little bit easier. And I found this thing online and it is called My Family Dinner Meal Plan. And what appealed to me was these freezer meals, you just assemble, you don't cook anything, you just assemble them all, then you throw them in a crock pot in the morning. Now, are we gonna use this every single night? No. But some days I just want to make it easier on myself. So I spent $27 and got sent a year's worth of meal plans. So the nice thing about these meal plans is she gives you a grocery list. So I bought things off of two grocery lists. Then you make six different meals twice. So we'll be making 24 meals. They go in the freezer. You pull them out the night before. You stick them in your crock pot. We're gonna see how we like it. Now we usually cook with moose meat and fish. We don't cook with a lot of chicken and beef, but we don't have much moose meat left in the freezer. I wasn't sure how the moose meat would do in the crock pot or if I would like any of these recipes. I didn't wanna waste the last of our good moose. I'm gonna save that for the nights I feel like cooking. And then I'm going to you know, keep any recipe that I really like. And when we have more moose meat, I will try these recipes with moose meat. I'm gonna keep a little, uh, you know, log of which ones the family really likes. You know, it's sometimes hard when you bring in new recipes. We're used to the things that we eat a lot, but I think this will be really, really helpful to me and to the family in general. So let's get going. So to get ready for this project, I did two shopping trips. I went to Costco, that's where I bought all my meat and anything that I thought would be a better price at Costco. Then I put in an order at Fred Meyer, just like a shopping pickup order and it was wonderful. The lady was so kind, just loaded the stuff into the back of my car and now we have everything we need for these 24 freezer meals. So we'll be doing 12 different recipes, each of them doubled, so 24 freezer meals. Like I said, I'll explain to you what each of them are as I'm going through them. There were some things on the shopping list that I already had, like spices and miscellaneous products. Hopefully I have everything I need. We're just gonna get started. So step one was the grocery list. Step two, she gives you the recipe twice with the instructions. This is not the recipe like what you're putting into it. This is to put on the bag. So we're gonna prep the bags. And then you have the actual recipe of what goes into it that you can put into your like recipe binder. So she gives you everything. She's thought of everything. The only problem is I printed them front and back. So I'm gonna have to go reprint them. I just realized. But these are labels to go on the bags. This is the actual recipe on how to assemble the freezer meal. See the difference? First step, we're gonna label our bags with these half sheets. So we're gonna cut them and then tape them onto our bags. She said you could also print them on like sticker paper and just stick them onto the bag. Maybe we'll try that next time. All right, I ordered these little doodads on Amazon to help me with this project. It just made looked like it made it a lot easier. So I'm gonna set these up and we're gonna get started. So the way I imagine these meals working is sticking this in the crock pot in the morning and then 
you know, making a vegetable and a salad and being good to go at dinner time, which the boys are really good at helping with those kind of things. So these are gonna hold our bags open. Oops. The kids were very interested in these when they arrived, as you can imagine. They were using them as little hats and stuff. Okay, I am going to stick your bag in, connect it, we're good to go. Gonna set up the first couple and then we're just gonna get to work. Recipe number one is chicken fajitas. So first of all, we need two to three pounds chicken breast. Let's see how much one of these bags weighs. Okay, we've got 1.5. Three pounds. I realize I don't work with raw chicken very much and I don't really like it. <laughs> it just like juiced everywhere. So I'm gonna find my other recipe that uses the rest of the chicken. I'm gonna get that done so we can get the chicken out of the way and sanitize before we do anything else. Tex-Mex chicken, let's find it. Okay, got our Tex-Mex chicken so we can be finished with the chicken. dealt with the chicken. Next up in the chicken fajitas is a bag of frozen peppers and onions. Now usually I would just chop my own peppers and onions but I liked the sound of how easy it would be and they weren't very expensive on my um, app so we're gonna try it out. We got three pepper and onion blend. Dumping it in. I like how easy that is. One can diced tomatoes. Whoops. And a diced jalapeno seeds removed. I'm gonna stick the rest of my frozen veggies out on the back deck. We call that our Alaskan freezer. In the winter time, we can just stick things out there and keep them frozen. Zest of a lime. Salt and pepper. This homemade taco seasoning. So chili powder. I like powder. Oregano. Some paprika.
Okay, we're done with recipe number one. Chicken fajitas, it says serve with tortillas and cheddar cheese. Bought the tortillas. We are good on those. Let's move on to the next one. Homemade beef style stew. This one starts with a chuck roast, which I got right here. Next up, we need a frozen diced onions. Frozen diced onions. All right. A bag of baby carrots. Got some tomato paste. I have to admit, I don't think I've ever bought or cooked with a parsnip. So each bag is getting a parsnip, peel and chop. Two cups of celery. Looking for time. This project is reminding me that I've wanted to go through my spice drawer and my spice cabinet, refill, see what I need more of, because I'm struggling a little bit on the spices I thought that I had. Okay, do I have any time? Hmm, of course I don't. That's all right, I think we'll survive without it. But I am adding that to my list of things to do. Parsley, bay leaves, salt and pepper, apple cider vinegar, last up we have some chicken broth. We've got our home style beef stew. That is a hefty bag. The recipe says these are good for up to three months in the freezer, so you can write the expiration date on them. There's a spot for it. So February 24. Chicken fajitas times two. Four down, 20 to go. We can do this. Clean up my space a little bit and keep going. All right, I'm sitting down for this one so I don't get too worn out. We are making enchilada bowls and it says chicken broth goes first. So we're gonna go for two cups chicken broth. I have to say these stand things are extremely helpful. Let's see if I can make this in the trash can. Got it. What about this one? Nope. <laughs> okay, one cupped quinoa. Got some quinoa here. Some enchilada sauce. One can chopped green chilies. Can of black beans. OK, 
Okay, so it says chili powder and cumin. I'm just gonna put some taco seasoning because I don't have any um, cumin. I don't know how I ran out of cumin, but um, the first two ingredients in this are cumin and chili pepper. So we're just gonna do that. Call it good. We can always add more spices when we make them. Then salt and pepper, and we're done. It says serve with cheddar cheese, shredded. I like it. That was a quick and easy one. Enchilada bowls. Excited to try this. Never made anything like that before. I'm just putting everything out in a box on the back deck, and I'm gonna have Mark help me take it all out to the freezer. Oh, I almost lost it. Whew, that was a close one. Gotta be more careful. All this hard work. I could see this with some like lettuce and tortilla. Get them outside. Okay, last one of round one is Tex-Mex chicken. Already got our chicken for this. We need cornstarch, which I need to get one large onion. It says cut into strips, so I'm not gonna use the frozen ones, but those were sure nice. I just need like a trash can next to me, I'm realizing, if I'm gonna sit down. Or like a bowl to catch all the stuff. Let me get a bowl for all my scraps. Be a little less messy. I'm always a very messy cook. So one nice thing about doing this is I'll make most of the mess right now and then the kitchen will stay cleaner. Okay, we are gonna cut this into strips and stick it in the bag. Oh, this onion is gonna make me cry, which, you know, I'll just let it go because if I'm being honest, this morning was a very emotional morning for me. I'm in the grieving process, if you don't know. Um, I am currently pregnant with twins and we lost one of the twins about four, five weeks ago. Um, and so this morning was one of those mornings where I just had to cry and let it all out. Um, honestly, this project was really good for me today because it gave me something that I wanted to do this afternoon. Kind of got out of my, did my crying and now I'm getting something productive done. So um, I could have put it off till tomorrow, but I felt up for it. So here we are, but the crying <laughs> is pretty regular around here right now. Okay, next we're gonna do a pepper. Being pregnant is one of the main motivators here for making these meals. I am on light duty, so this is the only thing that I planned for the entire day was to do these meals. And it took me till about 1.30 to get started because like I said, I had kind of a rough morning. But at dinner time, I'm often exhausted. So future me is going to be happy to have these helpful meals that I can put in in the morning. As long as I can remember to get them out, kind of thaw them out from the night before. A lot of them say thaw overnight, um, or do it from frozen. I just think it'd be easier if you just stuck it in the fridge the night before. It'd be a little easier to dump into the crock pot. I'm guessing all of these could also be done in the instant pot. Like if you forgot, you could put it into the instant pot and have it even quicker. I gotta remember that. When I'm done, I'm gonna put the lists somewhere in here in the kitchen so that I remember what I have in the freezer cross them off as I use them. These are just lists number one and two 
for a month's worth of meals and then I have 11 more of these type of things that I can go print out and make meals for a year. That's what I bought for the $27. So, okay, now we need salsa. I decided to put half of the red pepper, half of the yellow in each, just to kind of make it different. So we need a cup and a half of salsa in each bag. This is Tex-Mex chicken. I was wanting to use this salsa up, so this is perfect. Black beans. I'm just putting a whole can in each. There's no way that I'm just gonna do like part of the can. Pour a little bit of the juice out. My kids love black beans, so I feel okay with that. Just realized I wasn't supposed to add the black beans, but you know what? We're just gonna have to go with it. You're supposed to add it when you're cooking it. And then you serve this with two cups of rice. I think I just did this lid in there. Oops. Okay. We just need our spices and then this one's done as well. We need some taco seasoning because it says cumin and salt and pepper. Garlic powder. And cornstarch. So on the bag, it has instructions like cook for this long, shred chicken, remove, uh, make rice, and then serve with favorite taco toppings. What I think is kind of cool is you could give this to a friend and you could say, hey, just throw this in your crock pot. And it has all the instructions right there on the front. I think that's pretty great. The girl who made this, I don't know her name. I should look it up. But uh, she's definitely thought of a lot of smart things when putting this together. And that's what I needed right now. It was just easy and well thought out. Okay, we're done. Let's move on to the next ones. Okay, kids are home from school, but we're gonna keep going. Stick it like this, and then you stick one side up in each of the teeth. You open it up? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna work on two different ones because we're using this ground beef. We've got chili and we've got hmm? sloppy joes. How do, you, how do you make beef out of the ground? Beef comes from cows. And how do cows be in the ground? Okay, so Why we need ground, beef? ground because it's ground up. Oh. Got this scale here. We push on, stick that on there, and then we tear it so it's back to zero. Okay, we need about so two pounds. One fifty-four. Okay, we need one more pound. One. No. One. Okay, we gotta get up to six. Two pounds, all right. Two. Next one. I won't go out. Oh, look, you made it to two. That's it. Okay. I want to now we one. need frozen onions. Frozen onions. They're on the back. Porch. I need frozen onions. I need two bags of frozen onions from the back porch, please. Okay. What are they big? They're in a little bag and they say Do they look like onion. this? No. Oh. They're little frozen bags. Oh, I know what they look like. One cup. Mama, I'm, I'm almost. 
the winner. I I don't care if I of what? Oh, I don't care if I win the canned fruit drive because mm -hmm. I won it last year. Oh. Probably the other kids that didn't win yeah. didn't probably really want it, but it's fine. Okay, one cup frozen onions. Can I pour some? One cup frozen onions. Yep, you can pour it. Yeah. Okay, let's do it over this bag. Okay. I pour it in. Trash. That's fine. It's a little bit. A little oh, that's fine. Put it in. Oops. Okay, and uh, one cup frozen onions. This does not look, look yummy yet. And then we need garlic powder. Garlic. No, how much garlic? One tablespoon. Oh! Pour it in. No, I want I'll just dip it and then you can dump it. You scoop it. There you go. Put it in that one, please. Can I mix it? Diced tomatoes. I don't know how to open it. Like that, and then oh, you, it's you put that. your thumb in that little indent, and then you pull back. Diced tomatoes. Up? How do you lift it up? Like that. Okay, now turn it around, put your thumb in that indent. Oh, good, you got it. It's that's okay. 12 to the pencils to 3 spoons ratio. That does not look yummy still. Okay. Let me put the rest in. Black beans. Black beans? Right here. I need... Let's use something so that we don't hurt our fingers. <laughs> oh. Just one of them. That actually kind of looks yummy now. So black beans. The black bean juice is going to the very bottom. You need some cooked bacon. Yeah, we gotta cook the bacon in just a second. You use it to pop that. You see how that's pokey? Push it hard. That's how you open it. It give you that tool. You did it. Did I? Do a squirt in each. Good. Maybe, oh, so maybe another squirt. One more squirt. Good. Yep. Okay. Salt and pepper. Don't. Well, we'll try it. That feels good. Mom, is and this? And then we need. It says oh, is this cinnamon? Bacon. Is this cinnamon? That is cinnamon. Good job. Okay, mom. So last year, the, the ratio of the number of three games won by the number yeah, seven games lost was three to two. Write a ratio of the number of games lost. Oh. So the number of games played. So no, I need the little off. spoon. Um, I don't know how to. It says one take. pinch, so we'll just use a little bit. You, maybe just use this. Well, this is a salt and pepper spoon. Can you pinch it? Oh. That should be a. That should be a pinch. And okay. that, I need a little pinch him. Just dump it. Your hand. There you go. Why? Why is there so much stuff in there? Because I put in some taco seasoning. Oh. Bennett, you want to come cook some bacon for us? Last ingredient we need for chili is one pound of bacon per thing. So I'm just going to dice it up first because I think it's easier to cook that way. You may, yes. And then we'll be done with the chili and we're going to move on to the finishing the sloppy joes. I'm gonna have Bennett cook the cook this because bacon's kind of tricky, and you help me finish sloppy joes, okay? What are these? Those ones are for ham and potato soup. We're gonna do that one next. Okay, gonna take the bacon over and get it cook it. Why sweet in there? Are you on a talk a time piece? <laughs> Okay, Everett's gonna work on Sloppy Joe's. Well, that whole cup full, yes. Can I use my hands? Yeah. To get them? Yep. What do I These two? No, 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 those two are next to you. Add a little bit more, that wasn't quite full. Okay, this one calls for hot one bell pepper diced 
Um, I don't know why they didn't just have us use the frozen ones like in the other one, but that's okay. Actually says green bell pepper, but Costco just had these colorful peppers and so. Why is it not? Well, they're, green peppers do have a little bit different flavor, but I prefer, I like these ones, so. Dice means two. I had one okay person and the other one was pretty boring. I put one, no, just one piece in this one. I put bones right here. Yeah, you do. That really stings. Okay, a squirt of that in each of them. They had the ASD school recruiter, and, they, and she gave them all Sudoku stuff. Hmm. One more little squirt in each. Squirt. Squirt. I love cooking. Okay, put the top back on. It was weird. The police officer I saw didn't even eat donuts. He said he hadn't ate one in a year. Honey? Why? Why? Honey? I don't know. That's what it calls for. Yeah. She's dumping some of our honey in. So, the, hold on. I got, I'm got. i measuring as I dump it. Tacos? Chili. Ooh, that looks good. We're just waiting for the bacon. Okay. Honey? You know yeah. there's going to be a tax on bacon. Oh, we got a cinnamon again. Garlic powder. Where'd you put the cinnamon? I think it's gone. It might still be over here. Okay, how much? Just one fourth teaspoon. Mm -hmm. so just a tiny bit. That's enough, that's enough. Okay, so we need some Dijon mustard. Ooh, careful. What is that? Dijon mustard. It's kind of, it's like a spicy mustard. Okay, I gotta go refill my salt. Oh, careful. What is that? And then we need chili powder. Can you go see if you can find chili powder it, while I get salt? Is it in a pan? It's in one of those little cinnamon things. It says chili. Sorry, it may be out on the counter, back right there. It's over there, I think. Maybe. That's Behind there. you, I already used it, so. What? Oh, got it! <laughs> Refilled my salt container. One teaspoon salt. So, two little, two little things of salt in each. This? Yep, two of those. One. One. And then, how much chili powder? Two tablespoons, that's the big one. Woo, that's a lot of chili powder. One. Can I get you? We need two, so I'm just gonna pour some because it's getting low. Gotta look and see if we have more. Tomato paste, honey, chili powder, garlic, no, cinnamon, Dijon mustard. No, we already did it, we already did it. We're done. Sloppy Joe's, done. Yes. Okay. Okay, I need that marker from over there. Can you grab me that marker? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I have it. You just gotta put the date. These are, need to be used by Angels February. Part that doesn't sound right is the glow. Why do you need an air tightest? So that it doesn't go bad. It can't have air. Right now, shake it up. Shake it, can I shake it? How's our bacon coming, Bennett? Good. Can I take it? Airtight it? Okay, oh. next up we are making ham and potato soup. So dump all that in one bag and then we need one more of that bag from the from the porch. porch. Oh. Yep, we're gonna need those. Mm -hmm. Each one? Well, we already did the first one. That, we have... looks, that looks like a little bit more than... It's okay. Because, Mom, if you put it in the bag, it's going to cook in the thing. Wait, this one goes in there. That one. Oh, and half of this... So these are even. These are even. Yes, they are. Now we need a cup and a half. So this... Yummy. And this. That and that in each one. So next we have one and a half cups shredded carrots, 
three ribs of celery each. So we gotta get that out. Okay, thank you. I'll come grab it in a minute. I don't want it to be too hot. Thank you, Bennett. It says one and a half pound bag petite potatoes. No need to peel or dice. All right. Okay, we do need to dice this though. It says 16 ounces of ham steak. So we need our. But can I bring the bacon over? No, it's really hot. It needs to cool. Okay, let's what see is how big that is. 19 ounces, so that's about it. That's about right. I have another one of these that we're going to need. Now I get potatoes. Get all the potatoes. Potatoes! Okay, so this one, it takes water and broth but you just add it after so i'm not gonna add that gotta remember that okay i'm letting it stop i'm putting it in two i'm gonna start putting in okay i think that's it take this out mm, put it in pound and a half okay you don't crush them up they just go in whole Okay, Everett's adding two bay leaves to each ham and potato Four. soup. One, two, one, two. We need more ham. Okay, I'll do the ham. We need one scoop of salt in each. No. One scoop of salt in each. What is it? I put the extra. That's fine. Okay, once, one, just one spoon in each. Okay, do it close. And then two of these in each. Two of these? Like one, two, one, two. I need to get some more pepper out, but just put one little scoop in each. I think you got everything for us then. If that's it, let's see. We didn't put the bacon in. That goes in these. Let's go this back. One, we're going to do it after we close up these bags. Let me just, I got to finish cutting up the ham. Ham and potato soup. I want to have more bacon. 224. What heat? Alright, ready to do the last step in the chili, which is this bacon. Two packages of chili. Okay, 14 done. That means we have 10 left. Here's the state of the kitchen. I think we're just gonna have to power through. I'm gonna do a little bit of a cleanup, just kind of corral trash, put things away I know I'm not gonna use anymore. And then we're gonna power through and finish because I don't wanna make this mess again tomorrow. Okay, I prepped the last two, four, six, eight, and then I realized one goes in an aluminum pan. Thankfully, I had some aluminum pans. First one we're gonna do is Tuscan tortellini soup. So I did buy tortellini. You don't put that in, you save it for later. I also have spinach, frozen spinach, and then you add that at the end, the tortellini at the end, and then you keep the water and the broth out. I might make a bag to put the tortellini and spinach in, just so you know it goes together. But let's get going. First is one pound Italian sausage. One pound Italian sausage. Put in some onions. 
garlic. Hi, Luna. Can you please bring me up the box of tomato, diced tomatoes? Diced tomatoes, please. Okay, now we gotta refill the pepper. Running out of stuff. Okay, we're gonna go salt and pepper. One bay leaf. The Italian seasoning and dried basil. Well, Italian seasoning. Something I can't do. What? These. We could do that after Please. you do your homework. No, I just. When we could do it together. I would help you. When there's. Because I never get the tweezers. Oh, you don't have to use tweezers. I didn't use tweezers. I just use my fingers. I, which one did you, did you start at the uh, bottom? Top. The star is so hard to do. I messed up like 500 times. I'll help you, but go do your homework first. Get it out, and if you have questions, I'm here to help you. That one was pretty simple, we, but we have the frozen spinach and the frozen tortellini. Oh. It has that listed on here. Plus chicken broth and water. Oh, a lot of hard words. Yeah. Oh wow, that is a kind of a hard one. You can do it though. I believe in you. First one's probably hardest. What is it? Next up, bean burritos. Oh, oh. bean burritos! You're making beans burritos? That's one of these meals. How do you put do that? Starting with two cans of black beans. One bag frozen peppers and onions. Ooh, we chew with our mouth. People don't want to see what's in your mouth. Okay, next up we have cilantro. All ingredients except for cheese, tortillas, and rice. So I need... Cheese? Nope, butter. I only had two limes, somehow I read the limes wrong. So I'm going to use this true lime crystallized lime. It's like crystallized lime juice. I'm gonna put those in there. It'll give it just the flavor that it needs. I'll give you a lime. Nope, I already used those two, sweetheart. There was another recipe that called for limes. Some taco seasoning. Salt and pepper. No. We didn't take last week's. No, we didn't do. Oh. It still works. Two more done. Bean burritos. The irony is that I've been spending all afternoon making all these meals and I didn't prep anything for today. But luckily I have this beautiful smoked moose roast that we had I think two nights ago. I'm gonna chop it up, add some barbecue sauce, have it on buns, make a salad. And then the boys have an activity tonight so Mark's gonna take them and I'm gonna finish this up. And then maybe I'll clean the kitchen today. Maybe I'll have to wait till tomorrow morning. We'll see where I'm at but at least all the meals will be done. Okay, not bad for just throwing together a meal. Mark is stuck in traffic because it's really icy. There must have been an accident, so. Hey, are you okay? Okay, we gotta eat. All right, friends, I'm on the home stretch. Everybody left. We are going to do a Mississippi pot roast with this chuck roast. Okay, maybe they haven't left yet. You might hear them. They're getting into the car. This is something that I do make with moose roast quite often. 
but roasts are something that we are out of. So this will be a nice alternative. This is a slightly different recipe than I've ever done, but I'm gonna try it. It says half a cup of chicken broth. Garlic. Soy sauce. Never added soy sauce. Okay. Dried parsley. Dried dill. Dill smells good. This jar of pepperoncinis left over from last time we made this. So I'm just gonna use that. It said to use whole ones. I had sliced ones, so I'm just going with it. And then I usually like to add butter, but maybe that's because I my moose meat doesn't have a ton of fat in it. I have the rest of this butter here, so I am going to add that. And then I always add ranch packet, like a ranch seasoning packet but it doesn't say that. So we're just gonna keep it as is and see how it is. You could eat this with buns. We like to eat it with mashed potatoes or rice. Um, yeah, there we go. That was a quick one, which I'm grateful for because the last two are gonna be a little bit more work. I have some thoughts about this whole process I'll share with you at the end. So stick around, I'll tell you what I think is great, what things I would change, what things I would do differently. All right, Mississippi pot roast, ready to go in the slow cooker for eight to 10 hours on low. Okay, the last two we have. Spaghetti and meatballs, I have to cook the meatballs. Uh, and then there's a cheater's lasagna, lazy lasagna, where you have to brown the meat. I feel like these are the two most labor intensive. Okay, first up for the lazy lasagna, you have to brown the meat. So I need two pounds of ground beef browned with salt and pepper and then it let that cool while we make the meatballs and cook them in the oven. I'm gonna get the oven on to 400 degrees so that it can be preheating so we can make pre-cook the meatballs. Okay, this is the ground beef we have left. Okay, so I've got three pounds here. That's for making meatballs. And then I'm gonna cook up the other three pounds for lazy lasagna. Mix the ingredients except tomato sauce together in a bowl and form one and a half inch size meatballs. So I have the ground beef here. Then we are gonna do Italian sausage. One cup. I need a bigger bowl. I'm gonna add the rest of these onions to my ground beef over there. I don't want them to go to waste. This is our last recipe. Apple diced. Never had an apple in a... Actually, I haven't really made very many meatballs, if I'm being honest, so. 
none of them that I have made have ever had apple in them. But we're following the recipe here. Okay, the ground beef for the lazy lasagna is cooked. It is now cooling. My oven says it's ready for these whenever I'm done making them. Just gotta finish adding the ingredients and make the meatballs. One time I did make meatballs that I cooked in the in the um, crock pot. They were stuffed with mozzarella and they were amazing. But you, I should have pre-cooked them so they didn't fall apart. And they were moose meatballs and they were so yummy, but we're gonna give these a try. All right, what else goes in these meatballs? Two eggs, Italian seasoning. Tablespoons Italian seasoning. Garlic powder. Salt and pepper. Okay, just need some eggs. Okay, let's do it. I think I needed even a bigger bowl. I just grabbed this dish, I don't know. I think I would have maybe mixed this in the like mixer just to make sure it like all got. Okay, it's coming together. Eight minutes, that's not bad. So you're not cooking them all the way through, you're just kind of trying to help them so that they don't fall apart when you freeze them is what I'm understanding. I think we're getting a pretty good mixture here. Let's make some meatballs. Okay, a little change of scenery for the lazy lasagna. This goes in these aluminum pans. We're gonna start with the meat that we browned. Adding that into these two containers. Much more fat in this meat than I'm used to cooking with. Loose meat is super duper lean. So I'm trying to leave behind a little bit of that that in the pan. Okay, next we have some garlic powder and salt and pepper. We already put salt and pepper in. Oregano. You can tell at this point I'm just measuring with my heart because I am tired. Then we're gonna use one package of ravioli in each. I got the Christmas bells and trees. Then a jar of marinara. And then we need to fill these with, with water. Fill one with water and add. I don't know if I'm supposed to do two. That feels like too much. I'm gonna add that. Hope I'm doing this right. Yeah, I'm not adding more sauce than that. Seems very soupy. I accidentally stuck the ravioli in the freezer yesterday when I came home just to get them out of the way. I shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. They're going back in the freezer, so it really doesn't matter. Last step on these, add cheese, but my timer just went off. All right, here's our par-cooked meatballs. Look great. I'm gonna put in round two. I think it was a good idea to do these last two in tandem because both of them kind of need time to sit and rest. Last step is adding some mozzarella.
meatballs are still cooking. I think I will clean up a little bit while I wait. stretch. We're going to fill these bags up with meatballs. So it says to cook this with like noodles, like spaghetti and meatballs. I think they would also make really good meatball subs. The meatballs stayed together beautifully. So that's good. It says to do two 24 ounce cans, but I'm gonna do this, plus a can of tomato sauce. Ooh, that went all over my face. Well friends, my goal was to get the kitchen clean enough that we could have breakfast. I didn't wash any of the dishes, but surprisingly, there's not that many dishes from cooking 24 meals or prepping 24 meals. Thankfully, there wasn't a ton of cooking. I'm really glad about that. That was what kind of kept me from doing freezer meals in the past, was pre-cooking everything. So let me share with you a few things that, positives, negatives, thoughts. Number one, these amazing, 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 amazing. Especially if you're gonna do this over and over again, this was worth the investment. I'll link them down below on Amazon because they just kept the bags standing upright while you're fill filling them. I could see us maybe even using these when we are doing fish because it's hard to fill those bags. I don't know, these could be really helpful. And they do go from a small size up to the big size, so really these were invaluable today. Number two. I love that they used multiple things like over and over so that you could just keep out all the same stuff like the garlic powder, the cumin, like just get that stuff out and leave it out till the end. I like that it used the same kind of meat in several different things. That was good. I wasn't sure how I would feel about the frozen chopped veggies, the peppers and onions. Loved them because that could have taken a lot longer. So you pay a little bit more, but you save on time. I actually really love the frozen onions and peppers. Unless I had help, and we would just chop a bunch of them right at the beginning. Um, those were really, really helpful. I didn't even know they sold those at the store. So if I was doing these again, I would probably still buy those little frozen chopped veggies. Once I got a bowl next to me, a trash can would work as well. The mess dropped dramatically, putting all my little ends and trash bits in that, and then just dumping that once or twice was so much easier than having everything out all the time. I am a messy cook, but that really helped me. I remember seeing that on a cooking show somewhere, so I would definitely have something near you to be throwing your cans and your trash and your just all the extras because that makes cleanup a lot easier. Oh, Luna hears me talking to myself, so she has to come say hello. Hi, Luna. You've come to see how the kitchen is after my big mess. I did not sweep the floor, so she's gonna inspect the dirty floor. That's just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. 
I love the instructions on the bags. The recipes were easy to follow. A few things that I would do differently next time. Number one, I would not start at 1.50 in the afternoon, especially if you have kids and need to feed them dinner and help them with homework and get them to their activities. Whew, I should have started way earlier in the day. That's number one. Number two, I read through the grocery list. I read the names of every recipe, but I should have read the instructions on every recipe because I didn't know that I was gonna have to cook stuff. I didn't know that I was needing, like I it just, would, I would have been better prepared and it would have gone a little bit smoother if I knew that some of those things were needed to be pre-cooked. Probably would have done those at the very beginning so that they had time to cool off and then it would have gone a little bit smoother. Saving those last ones till the end where I had to do the cooking probably prolonged it a little bit, but I got the cleaning done while I did it. It all evened out, but when I'm reading through the recipes, I would probably make some notes and say which ones need cooking, kind of put a star, uh, circle things that don't go into the recipe that just stay on the side and then you put them in later. I would circle those just so that I'm not like on autopilot adding them into the bag and then I realize, oh, you're not supposed to add that till later. So that I think would all make things go a little bit smoother. I would divide my recipes up by type of meat and do all the chicken ones, all the beef ones, all the roast ones at the same time. I think that would also save time in the future. I just wasn't really organized in that fashion. I thought I would just go in order of how they came, but it would have been easier if I did them by type of meat. Overall, I think this was amazing. I can't wait to try the recipes. 24 meals done. I think future me is going to be so happy I did this. I'm gonna go put these away. When Mark gets home, I am gonna have him help me put it down in the freezer in the garage. Right now they're out, still out on the deck, but I'm not carrying them all down without help. I know my limits and I have reached it. So we'll get them in the freezer and then we'll start trying them and over the next month or so, I'm sure you'll see these meals pop up and I will give a review of what I think. So that's where we're at for now. Eight o'clock at night, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go get myself ready for bed. Okay, Mark to the rescue. He's gonna help me get these to the freezer. Okay, I will take one and come back for the other. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, Mark's gonna take this one to the outside freezer. Thanks, hon. I am more than ready for bed. Well, friends, we have 24 meals in the freezer, 12 in the inside freezer, 12 in the outside freezer. Uh, I can't go out in our driveway right now. It is so slick. So I'm grateful Mark took those to the outside freezer for me. I'm excited to have all those meals ready to go. So I can put them in the crock pot in the morning. I think it'll save us a lot of time and a lot of money over the next couple months. I'll probably be doing this again, trying out some new recipes, keeping the ones that I like and maybe not recreating the ones that our family didn't like. That's like, that's what this is all about, right? Thank you so much for spending the day with me. I took a nice long shower last night. I slept so good, I was exhausted, but it was a good kind of exhaustion. Like I accomplished something. When Mark was putting all that food in the freezer, he was like, oh, I didn't realize you did this much work today. I'm like, yeah, 24 meals. <laughs> so it was a good, tired like i accomplished something and i slept really well so thank you for spending the time with me making freezer meals we're so grateful for each and every one of you and we'll see you again real soon for more of this alaska life